right. Welcome to Free Range American. This one I'm especially excited for because uh, I've been waiting to get you on. It's a couple firsts for us here. You know, this is the first time we've ever had on somebody that has a secret identity. So, I mean, that's, that's new. Don't you think? Yeah, maybe. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I'm a secret at this point. <laughs> I, I mean, it's still fun. I mean, you, your character has become your persona, but also those of us that know you uh, personally know that the character is you as well, but it's also really funny. I think it's fun. I love I looking at your at your avatar, if you will, which is Skeletor holding a bottle of Stullies, smoking a cigarette with a bunch of ammunition and tattoos. I think that's amazing. It it, it greatly resembles me, actually. Uh, no. I have a tattoo on my leg. It says it's a skeleton in a coffee cup, and it says mostly bones. <laughs> it's like a squad leader called me mostly bones once. <laughs> <laughs> for for what? Just being thin or what? <laughs> yeah, he's like, "What's up with you, dude? You're mostly bones." <laughs> I was well, like, what does that mean? It's like, you don't have any muscles on your body. <laughs> like, oh. That must have been when you were young. Then <laughs> some of us it develops later in life. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm a late bloomer. That's why I lost my virginity at 32. <laughs> to my aunt. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm only 31 now. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, I'm being joined by Mr. Disaster or 18 Disaster himself. Man, you've had you've had a few pages deleted. How many? How many are you up to at this point? Yeah, you, you hit it right on the head. It's three. Okay, I've had a few pages deleted. We're on, we're on, we're on page four now. At which, least it, as far as Instagram is concerned. Which now is disaster.iv. So it started yes. at eighteen disaster, and uh, was, you just have to keep creating new ones. I don't know why they're mad at you because your jokes are so inside jokes. I don't see anyone at Instagram headquarters like even understanding what you're making fun of. <laughs> Either. The first one was, yeah, just 18 disaster. Then the second one was 18 disaster with the underscore. The first one got to about 12,000, 13,000 followers before it was uh, zucked, as the kids say, Yeah, off the, uh, off the Instagram. I don't remember what that was for, but I had gotten a lot of strikes on that account. I mean, I was, I was, uh, I was pretty volatile on that one. Yeah. Um, now, the third one, I, that was the largest, wasn't it? You were almost to a hundred. No, second one. Second, second one. You were almost to a hundred? No, I was up okay. to 50. I was getting close to 50. Oh, damn. I'm not, I'm not mistaken. But uh, that one was a little surprising because I don't have any reason to why. You know, they don't tell you why. They don't send you an email. They just delete it off the internet. We were, we were, our speculation was you were poking a lot of fun at Famous Seals. And we think one of them had a friend on Instagram. True. <laughs> One of those. On I'm just trying to dig, like, remember, like, what, because I remember I was super excited to see you growing up in those numbers. I was like, yeah, finally, he's getting, he's getting the, the cloud he deserves because your stuff is so funny. And then, and boom, that was a yeah, I, don't, I, I, uh, I actually think it was due to something having to do with the protest. I made a couple of memes about a pro, about the protest. In regards to like hitting someone and then you're getting shot and people being like, what the hell? I can't believe you got shot. Like, yeah. Well. <laughs> you know, I was, I was obviously, I was making memes about the protests for a while at that point. Was Not it, because I don't agree with them, but because it was funny to see like the reaction of individuals when they're standing in the road and they get hit by a car. And they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> you get hit by a car? It's like, dude, you're standing in front of a fucking vehicle. <laughs> Threatening to pull the fucking driver out too. Yeah, hitting, like hitting the vehicle. What do you expect? Don't, don't be surprised when you get hit by a car if you're standing in the road. Especially in front of a car, it's moving. Oh like, I mean, come on. So I don't know. Uh, that was the last like few memes, which was like kind of um, stuff revolving around. Then it was, it, and I guess it just was the the time. I guess someone saw it and decided that was it. I'm which was sad. weird because I didn't have any strikes on that account um, at all. I think I had like two strikes from the very very beginning, um, and then. I was smooth sailing with that account all the way up until it got sucked. I got no notification, no idea what, what post was the one that took it down or anything like that. Dude, it's wild because one of yeah. our close friends just got sucked, but he got, but he got revived. Sh shelves. Oh, yes. One the Tango 2. They wiped his account. And again, 
This guy is so inside baseball jokes that are literally mostly about PJs and Air Force special. You know, it's mostly making fun of tack peas and weather guys. And yeah, yeah, I have no idea out. why. It doesn't even make any sense. It doesn't. He's like the nicest guy ever, and he's got hips that are wider than his shoulders. Like he's the most <laughs> unthreatening person on the planet. He's shaped like grimace. Yeah, he's <laughs> like a pear. A, like a perfect little pear that you just want to take a bite out of. <laughs> he's so. Oh, I, I have grown addicted to Shelves' uh, camo, camouflaged voice on stream. And for those of you that don't know, uh, Mr. Disaster here. He's a streamer on Twitch as well. Aside from being one of the the best meme pages, I think in the military meme space. Um, and we've got a little group of us we call Salmon Gang. Uh, Shelves is part yes. of that. So. Uh, a lot of these guys, yeah, they have they have avatars because they're still active duty. They're still working in the space, so they still kind of stay secret because there are some people out there that take themselves way too seriously and get very angry when they get made fun of on these meme pages, and that sucks. I mean, I'll admit I was one like four years ago. I got mad when this guy was attacking me from the uh, gun industry, and I took it too seriously rather than laugh about it. So I've grown. I mean, we all do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things. Uh, I've uh, I've tried. Like, sorry, I got COVID twenty. <laughs> you you got twenty. Yeah, nineteen was was that was yesteryear for me. <laughs> yeah, uh, I got COVID twenty now going into the next year. Um, it it's one of those things that like I don't differentiate it too much between the meme side of the house. Like, it's not cool. Like, memeing isn't cool. You know, it's like. Like no one, I've said it before, but like, I'm not like super proud of the fact that I run a meme page. Like that's not like a cool thing to say. It's not an like, identity I, defining I, thing. I, I don't, I'm not like sitting over there like, oh, what do you do? Like, what do you enjoy? I'm like making memes. Like, oh, wow. And do you like, find cool, it funny dude. though that you, if you roll back the clock 15 years, we wouldn't even know what that word meant. Yeah, no, we didn't. I remember having like the first memes posted up, printed out from like Reddit or something on the like aid cage wall. There was even a debate. Fucking thing. Like, how do you pronounce it? Yeah, is it meme? Is what? it meme? Yeah. Meme. Is it meme? <laughs> and then now yeah. I think we finally settled in to our comfort zone with memes. It's become, it's become a po a point of culture too. Like, well, it's supposed to be. Uh, like I was saying, uh, is I don't think of it any different than skits at the end of a school or deployment or whatever. You know, it's like this is just a new form of skits, in my opinion. Um, sometimes people take it a little too far. Sometimes people take skits a little too far. Sometimes people take skits too seriously in regards to how they respond to them, especially when they're, you know, attacking their personal character and stuff like that. So it's the kind of the same same shit, in my opinion. Um, and it shouldn't be looked at any differently. Like, if you look at it like that, you're going to have a lot better time dealing with some of the shit that's on there, especially in the comments. The comments are the worst part. The meme might be on it, like, kind of bad, but the comments... <laughs> the comments, <laughs> the comments it, will really get you, dude. That's when it really hauls off. That's for sure. <laughs> you, you start, especially, you know, someone like me that has been memed plenty of times, you start seeing people you don't even know saying things that you're just like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, on the most recent one, what was that? There is, uh, there's one, I mean, they're like, like, shut up, fat man. All you do is make shitty, what was it? Like, all you make is shitty videos yeah. and we're a, only attack P or something like that. <laughs> it's like, God, like, all right. Who are you? And I go to their profile. It's just like some fat kid who airsoft was never in the military. Hasn't done anything, which is fine. But like, Wait, where, where are you? What legs are you standing on right now in regards to talking shit? But, but that moves into, into kind of the conversation I wanted to have with you, you know, specifically was how crazy it is when I think about what my life was like and personality was like when I was young and in the military um, and even doing a pretty cool job and how how I would carry myself or talk to other people. Well, where now with the internet and social media, yes, I've had a 16 year old kid that is a 16 year old kid. Tell me my combat is bullshit. 
<laughs> tell, tell me, I was just a tack P. What the fuck do I know? And it's like, you don't have to have accolades, experience, or achievements behind your name to come in and talk shit to somebody anymore. No, you don't, at least on the <laughs> internet, but not in real life. In real life, it's not happening. It won't happen. Like, you know, you're not going to be there sitting in uniform and like some 16 year old kid's going to come up like, yo, <laughs> you, I just wanted you to know that you're not soft. You're yeah, just yeah. attack pee. Hey, you're and just hey, attack what? You're shitty at swimming too. <laughs> what? what the hell? Where'd you find that out? How'd you know? Just, yeah, just some 280 pound kid tapped me on the shoulder. Oh, what's up? <laughs> what's up, pussy? You couldn't swim? <laughs> hey, you know who's also a pussy? Grand thumb. <laughs> I mean, it even goes to show too, like, you know, we recently had Eddie Gallagher down here. We did a show with him. Eddie Gallagher came on a live Q and a with you on your page. And like, he told you on that live, you know, you asked, Hey, you ever have anybody come up to you in person? And he says, no, not a single person, even seeing real deal dudes that jumped on the train to hate that guy and say, fuck him and blah, 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 blah. You have a guy that never experienced somebody walking up to him to his face and saying what they, they were okay with saying on the internet. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like, um, I think someone says it. Oh, fuck, who is, another SEAL said it pretty good. He has, this, he has a pretty popular podcast. Oh, Andy Stump. I love that dude's podcast. Um, he says like some shit about, I like, don't say anything on the internet that you wouldn't say to someone in an elevator. Uh, yeah, where where you're stuck in uh, ten by ten or fucking yeah, six by six. Like, oh, I might die if I say that. So, <laughs> I don't take that completely to heart because obviously I run a pretty volatile <laughs> age, and I don't have any problem with it. I also don't have any problem fighting someone in an elevator either. I don't give a fuck. But um, that's kind of more people on the internet, especially people who don't really like quote rate unquote yeah like more people should take that to heart because uh you know you haven't really done anything so like you talking shit on someone for not deploying or not being soft or one of the other fucking million memes we got you know seals hostage rescue stuff leaving yeah. cct's on the x <laughs> but rangers are just cag security <laughs> 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 what? like hey what what are you what are you but also too, you know, a pattern I notice as well with some of these comments is, and, and, and this is where I direct some of my arguments, my real name, my real face and my real resume is out in the public. And it's like, you click on some of these accounts that want to, that want to throw stones real quick and like be just super, super hard, like on you. And it's like, it's, 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 you know, Firestarter 111 with a, with a cartoon yeah. fucking avatar and they have nothing of them that identifies them. It's like, dude, you can't come at me and attack me as a person hiding behind a, a, a fake image and stuff like that. So it's just like... Uh, yeah. Well, people try to attribute that to the meme page as well. Like, oh, you're just hiding behind a meme page. Um, and yeah, there is some truth to that, uh, especially regarding similar pages and shit. But... Every, like I said, when we first started this, when it's like, oh, yeah, I mean, you're still a secret identity, you know, but like, no, everyone who's ever worked with me for any amount of time knows exactly who I am at this point. Um, <laughs> that's not that's not a secret. Anymore. Yeah. By so the like, way, I did get that phone call last night from the guy that that works for Black Rifle that served with you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't like it's it's not without. Uh, I guess, you know, like I, I, don't, I don't get to do things and then hide behind the meme page or say things and, and hide behind the meme page, meme page because anyone who's ever worked with me knows exactly who I am at this point. So I, I don't actually get to hide behind this. Like, yeah, no, but you've I, never, I, I, as I an account, you've, you've never been like, you're, you're not personally going after someone with like vigor and real hate. Um, no, you no. only make jokes and you make jokes that everybody kind of knows. I mean, the only, the only person you really even pick on as a person would be Rob O'Neill, but you're also just sharing the same shit that he puts up. <laughs> yeah. I literally just say exactly what he says. Um, I, I've, I've personally like got into it with people before, um, in the past, but 
Uh, I stopped doing that shit like really early on because I just got, I hadn't had social media in fucking 10 years or something. Like I don't, I think the last thing I had was Facebook in like 2012 or, you know, something like that before this page. So I had absolutely nothing for a while and getting back into social media through this type of mean, uh, or, uh, modality it was like really weird you know like i wasn't caught up in all the drama and extra you know this page does this and this is who this is i had no idea who anyone was but they were like major players in the game so it was it was interesting to see and i got caught up into it a little bit like where i started talking shit on people who were doing random stuff kind of like the combat boots and curves type of crowd you know who are like yeah, yeah uniform posting, yeah yeah i know what you're posting talking. suggestive pictures and like well, i'm not sure i'm into that but <laughs> <laughs> I got to a point where like, I actually don't care. So let's just fucking move on. I, fuck it. Yeah. All this um, can be funny. It's all fake anyway. It's like, whatever. I mean, and, and that's a good, a good kind of segue to just jump in real quick. You know, you do have a legit background. You have people that have served with you that work for, for black rifle and, and things like that. So we have mutual friends. You and I have been pr fairly close for the last, you know, almost half a year. Uh, so where did you start your career? I started my career knee high to a duck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I enlisted with the 68 whiskey option 40 contract in 2007. Ooh. Um, so yeah, I we went straight through that pipeline straight through is a relative term. Uh, recycled. Did, so you did, on, so you, did you recycle but, ranger school? I think I recycled pre-ranger and ranger school multiple times. I mean, you know, it's about <laughs> getting more training, right? <laughs> recycled pre-ranger twice for land now because I'd never even done it before. I think I did it once in basic training. But like, I, so my initial pipeline was obviously uh, basic, regular army, you know, medic school, airborne school. I went through RIP, not which is RASP now. And then uh, I went to pre Sockham, which was worse than RIP. Really? I don't know how that I don't know how that happens, but pre Sockham was is that special easily the, the worst. Define thing on the Sockham for everybody. It's a special operations combat medic course. It's okay. like where everyone goes up there. Um, as far as SEALs, well, I, I don't think NSW goes. They're doing their own thing now. But back then, it was you know SEAL medics, boat guy medics. Uh, fucking PJs. Well, no, PJs still do their own thing now. They used to go there as well. Uh, Ranger medics, CA medics, 18 Deltas. Everyone goes to the same kind of place up there. Um, and that's the Special Operations Combat Med Course. Uh, and it's up in Bragg. So pre Sockham is where you wait down at Regiment after you graduate RIP or RASP now. And uh, you can be there for anywhere from like a week to like three months waiting for a slot. So we were there for like three to four months and it was horrendous. <laughs> Two corporals were in charge of us. And they oh just God. Smoked, smoked the living dog shit out of us every day for no reason. I was like, this is the worst quality of life I've ever had. We lived across the fucking street from our work. Like, so it, there was, we lived still in the rip barracks. Like, like, so there was no escaping it. It's like, oh God. This is, a, this is so bad. So I was happy to finally go to Sockham. Went to Sockham, spent nine months there. I recycled uh, one of the first phases for getting a tourniquet and I got a neuropathy on my arm. Lost all feeling of movement below my elbow for 30 days. So what? I recycled there. You lost yeah, yeah. all feeling of movement in your elbow for 30 days? Yeah, it was kind of scary. I thought nothing, you know, <laughs> I, uh, it happened instantaneously too. We're doing this like, you know, a little round robin thing in the engineer trail where you do like different medical tasks and you just like run around. Um, and my uh, ranger buddy put a, put a tourniquet on me and immediately my arm just went limp below like the elbow. And I was like, well, that's weird. It must be because like there's no blood flow or something. I've never gotten a tourniquet before, like a real one. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know something that must be normal. I don't know. And, uh, he takes it off. We, we start on to the next, which is the next station is IVs. So we're running down there. We got to run like 500, maybe a click to the IV station. We get there and I'm like, hey, man, like you got to do IVs first because I'm feeling my arm hasn't come back. I'm not sure I can do an IV with one hand. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah no problem. So he does, he does the IV. He does it on my good arm. So I don't know why the fuck he did that because I have <laughs> a bad arm that needs that I can't use for anything else. So then 
he tells me to, to hold the IV bag up with my bad arm. And I'm like, I can't hold anything. I can't move it. And he's like, dude, just crap. Put it in. I want to get a go. And I'm like, I can't move my arm. And then the cadre is right there like, the fuck are you guys doing? I'm like, I, my arm doesn't work, Sergeant. Yeah. And he's like, what the fuck do you mean your arm doesn't work? I'm like, I... I can't move my arm. Like, what do you, what's wrong with your arm? You know, it's like the strangest fucking conversation you never have. With it's someone. one of those things though, you know, when the cadre is getting pissy and then you have to tell them that something's like really wrong. Like I had this, like where a kid, when I was an instructor was like, so sorry, I need to go to the doctor. Why? Like the skin on the front of my dick is ripped off. I'm like, like I'm oh not even, God. I'm not even touching that one, bro. All right, let's go. <laughs> We're going to the doctor. I'm not even. I didn't say something earlier. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real life shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's like, exactly like I'm that. not even questioning you at this point anymore. We're just gonna head to the doctor. I'm not. <laughs> you know that interrogation you get from the cadre when you're when you're injured. You know they're trying to see are you just are you just trying to get out of the activity yeah. right now or are you are you being serious <laughs> that's exactly what it was it's like it was also like the ranger liaison which is you know this notorious infamous figure who's there's only one ranger liaison at the schoolhouse there's a sea of 18 deltas and sarks and all these other fucking dudes who but there's only one ranger medic who's at the schoolhouse <laughs> typically because the regiment doesn't care to send anyone up there anyone else like, like one guy's fine uh so this dude stand up. he's like six seven his name's ah fuck I won't say his name. All right. It's probably common knowledge, but yeah. uh, the dude's like a doctor now. He's like a, uh, a genius, but he's also six, seven and he's got hands like the size of Wyoming. An astronaut he's too. Like he's a he's doctor, a astronaut, yeah. lawyer, yeah. like everything. Yeah. A fucking terrifying man <laughs> who's perfect for the job. A perfect quintessential ranger. He's just beat the shit out of seals. Like that was his thing in combatives. Like any seal that wants to fight me, let's fucking do it right now. And he just smacked the fuck out of him open hand. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> it's like, hey, what's wrong? What's wrong with your hand? I'm like, I can't move my arm, sergeant. And he looks at me like, what happened? I got a tourniquet, and then I can't move my arm now. He's like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah. He's like, come with me right now. I'm like, oh fuck! All right, like, this is this is serious, dude. This you can't move your hand after a fucking tourniquet. <laughs> yeah, we need to go. We need to go to the hospital. I'm like, oh okay. I just want to make sure it was, I thought it was my fault. <laughs> of course. You're always guilty when, when yeah. a, cadre, a cadre asks you anything. It's like, well, I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't asking you if you were sleeping, yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> like you're actually injured. Let's go, you idiot. Like, hey, you know, like I'm a PFC. Like, so, and I'm going, nothing happens. So I, I get to the hospital. We get there and he's like, it's a six hour wait in the fucking emergency room. And it's a Friday. The cadre is like, do you want to sit here? this i'm like no he's like all right me neither let's get out of here <laughs> like, all right, well, get it. it's not that serious so i'm like it gets better over the weekend everything gets better over the weekend especially when you're in private and you're a ranger you're putting water on it yeah i mean I'm, i'll be good by monday is the general theme for everything um it wasn't it wasn't better by monday i ended up failing like multiple hands-on tests on monday and then it went just downhill from there anyways long story short i recycle there so i ended up spending an extra couple months in sockham before going to 375 i was actually happy to recycle because i recycled into my all my friends class again because they all recycled the previous phase <laughs> so if you're not aware sockham's a very hard course hard being smart, everyone man. <laughs> everyone recycles it so all my friends recycled the previous phase, so I got to recycle in their class, and I was happy to see them again and go through the whole course with them. So, um, ended up going to 375. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Been a special operations medic since then for, uh, you know, just over a decade now. Mm. Been in the Army. A lot of good deployments under your for about belt. about 13, 13 years, going on 13 years. And I'm getting out, I'm transitioning out completely from the Army right now. I won't say much more than that because people are going to start to actually know who I am, which no, they already it's do. It's fine. But right there, yeah. Your story's good. You got you got some good combat deployments under your belt in the thicket. I don't know I'm in Afghanistan. Yep. yep. All yep. right. Yep. All right. And then now, you know, you've become a figurehead in internet culture. I don't know. Yeah. And I'm not sure how that happened. <laughs> I just made memes about Sockham specifically. Um, they were very, very, very niche, but uh, it just blew up out of nowhere. Uh, you know, me and my friends would just make memes about work and dumb shit. 
and, you know, just in a group. I think that's what most people do. Um, and then, you know, one day I'm like, hmm, I'm going to make a page. But your audience is, in, it's, it's very unique in the aspect that you are one of those guys that has all the respect from all the real deal dudes in the community, but you also have the young kids and the people wanting to do these jobs. You have their ears as well. And that's kind of a hard thing, a hard thing to dance on. Normally, you don't get both. It's, oh, you, yeah. you have all the kids that, that want, that want to know more, want to be you, want to know you, but all, all your, your actual peers are like, fuck that guy. He's a sellout. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the point. I mean, that's, uh, you know, we kind of talked about it last night, but that's the beauty of having a character or a figurehead that isn't myself because I'm trying, I, I don't want to be the next veteran influencer or personally or professionally benefit from the page at all. Like, I don't want that. Uh, I never wanted that. And that's not the purpose of the page. And it, it helps keep a, at least a, a separation between reality and the fact that I do have a real job in which I'm really a fucking medic and I really, you know, run a business and all these other things. And I don't want the page to affect that positively or negatively, right? Like that, those are yeah, two You want it to be great. Hey, yeah. this is, this is my for fun, kind of a hobby that's, that's, you know, becoming more fun. And also too, I mean, you have, you have a, a, a really kind of original creativity to it too, because you're the first person I've seen that, that has branded your live, that your live feeds the way that you've done. And for those of you that have never seen one, you, you started this thing and I'm sure you can explain how it started, but where rather than seeing you on the live feed, we're just looking at a tree that's in your backyard. And that yeah. tree has become iconic to everybody that is that has come to know you in the last couple of years. The tree is the most popular thing. It's an aspen. You can tell it's an aspen by the way that it is. Um, <laughs> what are you, a fucking botanist now? <laughs> oh man, it's a it's a really nice aspen. <laughs> <laughs> the first meme that came from it. Um, oh, so sorry. Yeah, so I would sit on my porch. And then I just had my phone propped up against the wall and it was just facing the tree. And that way I could, I could drink, I could smoke a cigarette out there on the porch, um, bullshit with Chad, I could see Chad. And it just happened to be facing the only tree that's back there, which is the tree. So it was the um, audience essentially that kind of branded the tree. <laughs> yeah, the audience made that big deal. Then, you know, as things went on, you know, I would get a little too drunk. I think I climbed it one time. <laughs> And I cut up my foot like real bad. <laughs> uh, so, oh, excuse me. I, uh, I climbed a barefoot too. I cut my foot like fucking real bad all the way down the middle to the where I like literally had to fucking, I almost did, did sutures on it if I could reach it, but I'm not as flexible as I used to be. I do remember a live you did probably like five months ago where I like tried to keep up with how much you were drinking. Like, and you just got wrecked. Like, you were over in that Stolies like every every two minutes. Another shot, another shot, another shot. It was yeah, great. Though. Yeah, there's a point of no return <laughs> that happened with everyone, but you know, especially with me on the lives, I just kind of get caught up in the community and the moment and the chat and just hanging out. Like that's how I treat it. Is like especially because this these lives started right when the quarantine started, and it wasn't done on purpose. It was just like out of necessity. I felt Boredom. like. I yearn for like some fucking social interaction. And like, you know, I remember talking with my girlfriend about it and stuff like, man, I don't know if I should do this because it's, it's going to become obvious who I am at this point. But like, <laughs> um, I'm going to fucking, you know, I might end it all if I don't start talking to people or something <laughs> like, like getting some social interaction. I've never felt this before. I'm just, I felt like I was on like, uh, you know, I was in prison, but like in segregation, like, you know, you're just, yeah, just, just solitary you know, alone. <laughs> I was like, man, I need to start doing something, start talking. And you know, it, it kind of just took a life of its own, just like the page did, like the whole live thing and fucked up Fridays and that, uh, dude, fucked up Fridays have become, it's almost like its own, 
its own program that if you haven't tuned in, you have to, because if you wait until about after 10 or 11 PM, the people that you will join in your lives that, that you do the joint live with, because you, you generally, you don't really know who it is. You're like, fuck it. Let's see who this guy is. And they are just wrecked in the barracks, like yeah. making total fools of themselves. It's fucking hilarious. It's hyper entertaining. Like I, and, <laughs> I mean, I love going in there and just fucking trolling the chat and like, I mean, you've had guys on there. Like, remember you had that kid on there that was just hammered and he essentially was like, how, like I, I, the guy must have failed SFAS like 12 times or something the way that he kept saying. So I went back and then I went back and you're like, oh, yeah, hey yeah. man, it's about time you maybe think about a career, a career choice just moving out of this. <laughs> he failed twice or three. I think he failed twice in a row and he made it through the entire thing and he wasn't selected both times. And I was like, maybe it's just time to do something else. Yeah, yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you did all of selection already, and you didn't get you didn't get selected. So you should know exactly what you needed to change on the second go round. And if you go through all selection again twice and don't get selected again, man, I don't know. Like you already had all the G two that you could possibly get. You did the whole thing already. So all you had to do is be like a team player the second time around. And you give the most honest, direct advice to these kids and they still are just a, no, man, there was some cadre that had it out for me. Like, you're like, no, man, you're not looking at this objectively. You've done this all the way through twice. (laughs) Like, like you should be able to swim through this thing now. Most people only have to do it once without ever knowing what the hell they're about to do. Like, so that just says a lot about the type of individual. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. Like, yeah, maybe go a third time and finally make it. But I'm just saying, hey, don't be surprised if you don't get selected again. This is so insane. <laughs> jumping into like how internet culture has changed, like we have this epidemic, I will call it. I think you're the doctor, so you're going to have to tell me if that's correct. This, this new thing where everybody puts future and then fill in the blank with some sort of special operations job in their Instagram bio when they're when they're in high school. What what is going on with this? I think that's more of a meme than anything else, but it has to be true. I don't know if I've found or came across anyone. I'm sure I have. I think I even did it on MySpace. You know, 2007. <laughs> this isn't th- this isn't a new thing. This is just uh, something that's become uh, more popularized through the military meme culture that's been created in the last year. Like before me and killer man cometh, killer man cometh was before me. Uh, there was no like soft military meme pages really. Like it wasn't as big as it is now. There's like hundreds of thousands of pages now. So like two years ago, and I, I can just explain kind of the internet landscape of social back then. Like it was like, actually it was around 16, 17 when the gun industry itself started seeing big, big meme pages pop up that really, you know, they were going hard attacking everybody that had any sort of popularity or character. And that's what it was. It started out as first as like character assassinations. Mm -hmm. Then, then it started to get more popular and more regular. And then it turned into fun, lighthearted fun, fun shit. And then, like you said, in the last year is when the military side you know, kind of, kind of came in. I mean, you had pop smoke first, I think, yeah, and military humor and pop smoke are prime. I would say the OGs in the military meme sign. Yeah, I don't even follow those. I've never even heard of those Jews. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they were they were kind <laughs> of first. That's how, in my own world. I am. Yeah. Like I, I, I don't even concern myself with with really anyone else. Typically, I just do my thing, and then yeah. I just, you know, if I end up talking to someone. Or the DMs or whatever, then we become friends. But, but they were just yeah. general military. It wasn't. It was yeah, yeah. special. So you're not getting those inside baseball jokes. You're not getting those hard, hard jokes. You know that are like, you know, tough to swallow. But you're still like, ooh, you know, <laughs> like killing. Yeah, I mean, friendly fire, Green Beret jokes and shit like yeah, that. You're exactly. like, whoa, they're really yeah. going out there. <laughs> yeah, making a meme about John Chapman being left on Taco Bell. <laughs> like, no, dude, what the fuck is going on here? Um, but it is. It doesn't mean that I hate seals or I hate Dev Grew or I hate fucking Bat Boys or SF dudes are all fat or no, 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 no. If we, uh, you know, Any, nine that, times out of ten, if we meet each other, like we're gonna be thicker than thieves. We're gonna have a fucking beer, and it's gonna be like I'm gonna get along with a dude from Teams or do PJ or anything like that. Well, more, way more. 
than I will with some like rando at the bar. Like I actually want to talk and bullshit with the boys, even if I just randomly happenstance meet them. I don't want to talk to a random dude at the bar uh, for no reason. Yeah, like, no, I I'm mean, not doing. I, that. But nine times out of ten, like you can you can generally feel someone out real quick just by the lingo or what they use. If someone comes oh, at yeah, you yeah. saying saying, "Oh man, I hate Dev Group because they were fucked up." When I was there, this if you just lumped an entire unit into one sentence and then you you now hate that whole unit because your one experience with one person maybe or a couple of people, like you're not that intelligent. <laughs> like, no, you're an idiot. You're an absolute <laughs> idiot. It's it's it, it's kind of like those guys, oh, uh, I worked with spec ops. It's like I've never heard anybody <laughs> say yeah. spec yeah. ops. No, from the community. No. <laughs> no, yeah. It's like the last guy that we had on my story where he said like 75th Ranger Reg or something like Reg. RGR Reg. Yeah. It's like, hey, no one calls it that. Yeah. So I definitely, I know that you weren't in battalion because when no one ever says that. Looks at you and goes, oh, I was a U.S. Navy SEAL. No fucking real SEAL has looked me in the eyes and said, I was a U.S. Navy SEAL. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you weren't a Thai Navy SEAL or something. You, you know what I hear? Oh, I was a West Coast guy. I was an East Coast guy. I was a team guy. Okay. I was NSW. That works. But I was a U.S. Navy, I was a US Navy SEAL. I'm a Korean Navy SEAL. Okay. Um, Those do exist, though. Yeah, they do, and they're pretty cool. But anyways, going back to the original question, because I think you've asked multiple times, and we just haven't. We keep going off into tangents, rabbit holes to the left and right. But um, I don't think it's a new thing. I think I, like I said earlier, I think I remember putting something in my MySpace, like uh, going to basic training for fucking army ranger school or whatever, you know, <laughs> like see in three months, you know, whatever. <laughs> and, uh, God, but, you be a ranger. When, when basic training ended and I got onto my space, everyone had left my space. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, fuck. Yeah. I was like, I was hoping for all these fucking, you know, attaboys, adore, love, yes. love letters from all these hot chicks in the DMs, you know, like, oh, we love you. Thank you for your service. <laughs> There's nothing. Everyone had gone on to Facebook. <laughs> I really thought that would work. Uh, obviously, it's like a young man's cherry boot stuff. Um, and it's going to happen. People are proud of like the decisions they make and all that kind of stuff. Uh, all, it, it is nerdy for sure. And it never not, it never won't be. But like, you know, I think that people join the military for a variety of reasons and they have aspirations to go to soft to prove something to themselves a lot of times and prove something to their peers and or parents or friends or whatever. Like, yeah, see, I told you I'd make it. I can't wait to come back here in uniform <laughs> <You know>. <laughs> <laughs> with my with my trident on and show everyone that they're wrong about me. You know, it's like, all right, well, that's probably the wrong reason to join. You're probably not going to make it because it's, it's a little harder than that. <laughs> you got to have a little more gump about you. Like you can't be joining so that you can say you're a Navy SEAL on the internet afterwards. Like that's. Well, that's I mean, gonna... I would say that was the the brutal reality that hit you because upon you coming out of basic training and everything and you're like, oh, wait, we're off my space. And then you get to the unit and you're like, if we see you on there, we'll kill you. You're like, yeah, there was none. There yes, was, you yes, Sergeant. <laughs> There's a period in, at, at Bico 375 where we were, we had to delete our Facebooks. Like wow. you were not allowed to have a Facebook. Um, and I don't remember how long that lasted, but I don't remember getting back on Facebook after that. Cause I remember just using. No AOL one wants to be that guy, there. you know? Well, dudes, like a couple of dudes got RFS for some like real real tame shit compared to today's standards on social media. Like they should still, like they would still be in the Ranger Regiment for what they posted oh, wow. if it was done today. Cause like it got shocked to some like OPSEC stuff, but I posted a picture at the range, you know? Yeah. There's nothing. There's I no, mean, it's pretty <laughs> loose on. now. I would say it's, it's as, it's as loose as it's ever been. Now it's kind of like just an accepted necessary evil by everybody. It's like, fuck it. All right. It shouldn't be. Um, I, I believe if you're an active duty member of special operations, you don't need to be posting pictures of your shit and making it known that you are. Because like, that's the wrong reasons to be in the organization, in my opinion. And that was something like it, that you and I talked about last night was, you know, I had my buddy that, that uh, 
started, got out of group and started a, a firearms company. He was like, man, it just seems like some of these guys are just doing this shit for the gram now. <laughs> Uh, well, it's totally true. And you can see it in the, you know, they get all these professional videos done every day and post those. And, you know, they just want to become the next viral sensation, um, which goes full circle into like, you know, what the page is, at least mine is, and why I don't want any of that uh, attention in that fashion, because I just don't, I don't want it. I don't care about it. <laughs> like, I don't want anything. That's set, like, I don't want my real life, uh, professional and personal aspects like attached to the, to the page at all because I just don't, I don't want to, uh, I don't want the page to benefit from it either. People always ask me like, oh, Ranger, SF, we both, you see her? How do you know everything about PJs? Like all this stuff. And you're like, hey, like, are you just trying to see if I rate talk and shit or what? <laughs> like, like it really comes down to it. Like comes kind of comes full circle is like, now it's going to be coming like a meme page thing where like, do you even rate shit talking or putting memes into stuff like I kind of touched on earlier. Like there's pages out there that have recently come out that were, you know, huge pages that were ran by yes, children that were ran by fakes. Yeah. Just a, a person not even in the community and never has been. And they're making strict Ranger regiment memes. <laughs> and, the, and, and also talking shit. I mean, I remember yeah, and talking, talking shit out. to you, like, call, like, like, and then it comes out, wait, this dude wasn't even in regiment. Like he, this guy straight up told me and it, I'm like, I'm like, so where are you at? He's like, Oh, I'm, I'm third battalion. I'm a, I'm at the flagpole. I'm a team leader over here. Okay. And then, and then I realized in later conversation when he didn't understand basic acronyms, things started getting fishy. Dude didn't know what I, I asked him if he knew anybody in recce and he, and he comes back with what's that. And that went, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, am I pretty... stupid? Am I stupid? Did they, like, I, I was getting gaslit because I felt dumb. I was like, did they, shit, did they, I need to call somebody. Did they change the name of recce now? <laughs> Genius, dude. He didn't even know how good he was at it. <laughs> we should go to the CIA or something. I know you're making me feel stupid. Like wait, RRD, RRC, whatever the fuck it is. Come on, man. What is it? You know anybody over yeah, there? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know what you're talking about. You're like, fuck, dude, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I yeah. am getting old. I feel dumb. I feel like a boomer. Like, and then five days later, they're like, oh yeah, that guy. Yeah. It turns out he was a fake. He's in, he was never in Ranger Battalion. Oh, okay. So for a long time, there was a few core Ranger pages who, from the get go, I was like, "Dawg, that dude's fucking. That dude don't even talk like a freaking Ranger. Like if he is in three seven five, three seven five changed a lot. Apparently, <laughs> like you go fuck, dude. Like if that's what's walking around as a team leader at three seven five, I dude, I don't know if we're gonna make it. I might have to like get my tattoo covered up or something. Like I, I, I got. I'm just gonna start ripping the scrolls off the wall. My uniform. Like nah, I'm not. I'll just go with that out because I don't want to be associated with it anymore. <laughs> kind of like all the all the seals pulling their creed, their creed, their framed creeds off the wall right now. Uh, well, I don't need this anymore. <laughs> Maritime warrior. <laughs> Four guys, dude. A group of maritime warriors. Oh, man. Mm, Brotherhood was a little better, but whatever. Um, it's like with that term, you know, I had a really good friend. He, I, You know what? This is a good story for you because I feel like he's a true OG of memeing before memeing was a thing. And he was the author of an old website called Bob on the Fob. Did you ever see this? I feel like I heard of it, but you'd have you uh, you definitely have seen because people would print a lot of his content and hang it up in talks and stuff like that. Like he yeah. would make these diagrams. Like one of one of the most popular ones was called the Hot Officer. It was a hot chick officer, and it like listed all the <laughs> all the bullet points that make up what makes up a hot officer. You know, or they had they had the he had the original like Fobbit which is, this is like 2006. Like he, this circulated around the internet was, you know, the guy that you could tell his ESS glasses, his magazine on his, on his, uh, butt stock. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, this dude was circulating this stuff back then. And, and he eventually, uh, his name is AJ Merrifield, good friend of mine. He lives in Austin now. He actually came up here not too long ago and hung out. Um, but he, uh, he became like the driver and assistant to uh, a command sergeant major, like at the division level or higher. It was someone super, and I, it might even been like someone in the sergeant major of the army's office, if I remember right. But what he did is he had access to that fax machine 
that the sergeant major of the army would use. And he created this, this fake memorandum to the army that said, we're no longer using the term battle buddy. The accepted uh, term is now warrior companion. Oh yeah. And he, That's where that came from. he faxed that out to like 25 CSMs and then just let it branch from there. And he trolled the entire U S army because he said it came full circle. He was in B knock later on or a knock, whatever BLDC. I don't know what the army's leadership courses are. So don't, don't flame me. You were pretty good there. You hit like a couple of them. Uh, um, and they addressed that in there. Hey, we're no longer using the term battle buddy. It's now warrior companion. And he's like, yes, like <laughs> I've I, made it. <laughs> I've heard that like so many times. It's like the stress card. Thing, you know? <laughs> like uh, everyone knows someone who heard of the stress card and they saw it, but no one's actually seen it. No everyone's one's actually seen someone. it. No one's actually yeah, seen yeah. someone use it. Uh, it's just because it's basic now. Like, no, nah. do but, they? Yeah. Like the warrior do companion they? thing. I've heard that so many times throughout the uh, last decade. That was agent's like, troll, man. It was brilliant. I can't, I, I call people warrior now. Cause you're not, so you're not allowed to use the term private. What? Where? Private, private, like, you know, they're privates. Yeah. You can't call them private because private's demeaning. It is? <laughs> yeah, like, in what? certain places in the army, utilizing, like, hey, when did private. This, when did this happen? <laughs> it's not, it, you, so hopefully we can get some clarifications from, like, a drill sergeant or something, but <laughs> I'm fairly certain that you can't refer to them as privates anymore. But so, hey, maybe, yeah. something's, maybe something's fucking changed. So now maybe their that's not rank true. is offensive. Because but I know that I wasn't able to call people privates, but that's just me. I don't know. So I just call them warriors. Hey, yeah, because that's kind of demeaning too. Get over here, warrior. It's way demeaning, yeah. especially because they're just all cherries. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I was called. I was a cherry. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I just called a, a fucking idiot. I also uh, was around when when hazing was very loose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there it's was like you no, say, like, rules. yeah, you say that you're not. I'm not afraid to fight someone. I'm not afraid to fight fucking five guys because that's that's yeah. what I grew up doing. Getting fucking rolled the fuck up by a lot of dudes that were scarier than me at any given moment for no reason <laughs> for no reason like i'm holding the vacuum wrong <laughs> of not getting fucked with in regards to fighting <laughs> because i won ranger rendezvous boxing before i got to vico Whoa. so i was i was kind of like a, a folk hero and you know by the time you know a year into into being in battalion my reputation was so incredible in regards to box. I don't, I don't think anyone in my platoon or company had ever seen me box, but I was, according to all of them, a golden glove box. <laughs> by that, by the, that point. The, li- the, the, the legend just kept growing without you even yeah, yeah. A- attributing to it. <laughs> so, I, like there was this one E6, he'd come in and he would like beat the shit out of the other medics. And then he'd look at me like, I'm fucking with you, doc. And like, <laughs> and I'm like, why? Well, I, I don't that just that just fueled the the legend even more. Yeah, exactly. Like it, if an E6 wasn't willing to just hit me like he's hitting everyone else, like oh wow, he must think I'm really good at fighting. You you won the psyops campaign now. <laughs> that was probably the reason why it was so popular was the fact that I never said anything about it ever. I mean, and then yeah, I wasn't then in there just, with my plaque or something. Yeah, like, you just, hey, look at this. <laughs> you just sprinkle in a, a memorandum from regiment that says you're not allowed to partake in any any of the combatives, and just <laughs> just 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 plant that like in a stack of papers so somebody finds it. Like, wait, what the fuck? Like, regiment says he's not allowed to fight with us. Like, it makes you even scarier. I think I think it it originated because someone just came into my room and I did have my pla- the only thing I had in my barracks room at that point, you know, other than my my issued gear was the plaque of winning Ranger Rendezvous boxing. And I, you know, <laughs> one of the dudes is like, "Did you win Ranger Rendezvous?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he's like, "What the fuck? That's incredible!" <laughs> like, that turned then, into I golden gloves. About it, yeah. That dude fucking immediately told everyone on the floor, probably. And by the time I was actually running and gunning and doing things during the training cycle, yeah, my reputation was fucking. I was basically Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> yeah, of, yeah. Now of, you're. Of he used to be an. He used to be an Olympian, man. You didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> I, and no one ever saw me box one time. <laughs> Still to this day, you've ne- they've never seen you box. 
Probably not. I don't oh know why they would. Have. That I, I never, <laughs> I never competed again, and I was, I was lucky I didn't because like the next one, we just gotten back from from deployment, and uh, I was like, man, I ain't, fu- I ain't fucking boxing this one. Like, I'm just gonna. I feel like drinking some yingling on the side and just throwing cans at the fighters or something. Like that. Like, <laughs> that sounds, sounds way more, more fun, fun than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like fuck that. But I'll I tell also, you what: if you if you did if you did jump into a boxing max, I know I know exactly what you wouldn't do. You wouldn't cheat. I would not cheat no. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not cheating. The U.S. Army esports. <laughs> Oh, some drama went down yesterday. Yeah. I came in on the tail end. I was at dinner and I got I missed all the good stuff. But what happened? Are okay, we so yeah? I, I, if you're not involved in like the video game community, you're probably not going to care about this at all. Uh, you also probably <laughs> won't understand any of it at all. Either. I mean, if we talk but, about anything that anyone's going to care about, this is yeah, an I mean, hour show on memes, guys. Yeah. <laughs> if you're all still that, here, we uh, thank you. <laughs> all that matters is that it means something to me. Cause I'm a very selfish person. <laughs> so anyways, the cap, the, the KD, the kill death ratio cap, the kill death ratio that an individual has in call of duty is a, is a uh, directly correlated with the overall skill of the individual. So if someone gets two kills for every death, they're pretty, they're a pretty good player. If they get one kill for every death, they're an average player. If they get three kills for every death, they're like getting up into pro type of stuff Four kill, you know, it's like, it gets so on and so forth. So a quads tournament is played for $450. It's a $40 entrance fee to, to uh, get into the tournament. And most of the tournament is ran or uh, the participants are, are dudes from the community. It's like a bunch of dudes from the military. The U.S. Army Esports has, uh, has a team playing in there. I don't think they're officially like sponsored by the U.S. Army Esports, but I don't know. Two members, three members are actually part of the U.S. Army Esports team. So it's kind of convoluted in that, in that sense. But, you know, like Matt... Is playing in it, Eli. You know, it's a good time. It's fun, fun stuff. We've done this was the second Sex, week in a row that we've done it. All the boys that you guys, yeah. you guys watch Twitch, right? And um, so, anyways, four four players. The combined kill death ratio. If you add up everyone on the team's kill death ratio, could not be over eight. And the reasoning for that is to not have some pro player in there who just mops the floor with the entire lobby. Yeah, because it's supposed to be a fun thing where money is involved, but it's not like. Super you guys, sweaty. You want to have the entry point, the barrier to entry equal with you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, for all of us who are participating, mostly like, you know, Matt's team and, and mine and all that, like we aren't missing the money. You know, like I, I don't need $450. Like that's not going to change anything for me. I can't. It's, it's a, but it, it might for some of the other teams, especially going on this year and stuff like that. And it, you know, someone sponsored our team. And gave me forty dollars of their hard-earned money that they worked for and used their time to to uh, to earn. Sponsored our team to enter in, uh, enter in the tournament. And what happened was the U.S. Army esports team, or I'm just gonna say it, this is the U.S. Army esports team. <laughs> they one of their members was using like a brand new account, which is very strange, right? Like, because if you play the game uh, often enough. You're going to have a max level account because you play the game all the time. And that's, you know, usually determined, you know, that you actually play the game on a regular basis. Um, so for to have someone in a tournament with a low level account was very strange. And we called it right off the bat, like that guy's probably a Smurf. And a Smurf is someone who's sandbagging. It's like a, a semi pro player using a brand new account to bring down their kill death ratio, then to just mop the floor. Yeah, <laughs> with the lobby, <laughs> so it's a very <laughs> disingenuous thing to do, especially from the U.S. Army esports team, which is what exactly what they did. Once they they obviously won the tournament by over thirty or forty points, which is kind of ridiculous because there are some pretty good teams there. So to win by that much, pretty obvious what happened. The dude alone got like sixteen kills by himself one game. You're like, what Jesus. the fuck like, is going on right now? And. uh he like one v four to our team, like which is kind of sad to say. Like I actually think we're pretty good, but yeah. to get mopped by one dude, I'm like, oh, like this is this guy ain't who he says he is. Like that's bullshit. <laughs> um, so after the tournament, it comes out that old boy has a previous account. His main account that he typically plays on has a kill death of three point eight eight with over eleven thousand kills and all that shit. And like 
Uh huh. So that's a full, that's a pro player. That's uh, getting real close. Like the dude yeah. averages eight kills a game. I average five, which is really high. And, and you're and most you're people average like player. three to four. So yeah. this dude, uh, he and the entire team did it knowingly as well. So the reason why he made a new account. So you didn't see the KD ratio? So you didn't see the original one. So his new account that he had only like eight hours played on only had like a 2.9 KD on it. So that brought them way closer to the KD cap of eight. Like I think they were 8.3. But if you utilized his old account, aka the one that he had last week or whatever, <laughs> <laughs> their cumulative KD as a team would have been 9.52. Which, which is, is against well the rules. Higher. It's against the rules for one. Um, it's also... To have sub members, active duty members of the military from the U.S. Army esports team do something like that in a cash tournament and actually win it is uh, is bad. It's very bad. And it's a very bad look for the U.S. Army and it's a bad look for special operations because one of their members is actually an SF dude, too. So it's like these are both communities, you know, special operations community, the army. These are these are places I'm affiliated with as well. Yeah, but I don't like the fact that this is you know, a lack of integrity. Of watching, <laughs> yeah, thousands of people are watching this tournament, and the U.S. Army esports teams wins by cheating. Like, uh, I don't think that's what the U.S. Army esports team was created for. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's to, a bad look for the army. I need to make KD Gate 2020 logo. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what it's turned into, and it sounds so trivial. Even when I say it, it's kind of like saying, "Like, oh, all you do, I got to run a meme page." Like, that's lame. All right, <laughs> <laughs> ladies, um, ladies and gentlemen, this this episode is about memes and Katie Gate. This is this is this is what's important right now. This is the news you want, not the news you're forced to hear. You know what I mean? All six people who listen to this from San Diego, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, shows and Joey. <laughs> And Dooms, just being an asshole. <laughs> yeah, an asshole. He's just grumpy, still waiting for a computer. That's, a, that's his problem. <laughs> yeah, shit. Um, and then, so, to elaborate a little further, they didn't get disqualified for that. So they still won, uh, and they still got the money. At least as of last night. I haven't updated or looked at it today, but I would assume nothing's changed in that regard. Uh, I would like to point kind of out something about things. your character, though, because before... Before you went scorched earth with this, you slept on it last night and you woke up and you still wanted to go scorched earth. So, I mean, at least you slept on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was like, I got a little heated last night about it. And a little <laughs> heated is an understatement. I went full, full fucking E5. <laughs> I went full brand new E5 from 375 on this fucking thing. But you know what, um, though? I think that's, I, I think people sometimes forget because I experienced that the last the last week or so too, with all this shit going down with us. It's like people were getting, were, were surprised that I would fire back with the attitude that I would. It's like, motherfucker, do you know who I am? <laughs> like, I didn't change just because I went in business. I'm still an E6 that was, <laughs> that was attack P and you, if you talk shit, you're going to get fucking shit talked right back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're just older now and we just decide yeah. what we're not going to care about. And this is something that I cared about. Like it's, I care about it for a myriad of reasons, but mostly because it's the army doing something disingenuous um, in a cash tournament. And I think you're justified. Uh, I think maybe I should do a judge video on this. Do you? Yeah, I think, uh, <laughs> I think so. The people well, versus the Army esports team. <laughs> I think I think someone's already talking to the public affairs office for the Sergeant Major of the Army regarding oh, it. I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Katie Gates gonna get interesting right before Christmas. I, I hey, there's a lot of things I let go. Cheating is not one of them. Uh, <laughs> cheating, you know, the whole adage like you're not cheating, you're not trying type of shit. Yeah, that that works until you get caught cheating. <laughs> <laughs> with your buddies. Dead. With your buddies, though. I mean, there's there's some <laughs> cheating that's funny, it's comical, but this one, this one wasn't. This one, this one stung a little. And also them not admitting it and acting stupid. Like, oh, we didn't know. That's <laughs> real sad. It's real sad. So you're either the biggest morons on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> or what? Or you knowingly did it. I'm going to go with you knowingly did it. You know that he had that account, a previous account. You know that he was sandbagging. Why else would you ask him to go on the team? Yeah, true. If you didn't, it, what? You thought he was a, sh he was a shitty player? 
I mean, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. The positive spin about this is the fact that there are going to be so many good memes, and we all we all know it's going to really get under their skin about it. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, we do. This is going to be real easy. And then we're going to invite the esports team over to play Among Us with us again, and we're just going to win. <laughs> we're going to win. <laughs> do something. I don't know. I don't know if winning's in the cards because there isn't any winning in in this uh, in this space. But I mean, you said you said earlier in there that you know the whole meme page doesn't define you. But honestly, though, when you make a fire meme that really, really gets gets your friends going, I mean, that's that's a good feeling. And you do that a lot. You you fucking send it on some that I go back and look at like three or four times and still laugh, and I love it. So, oh, uh, dude, yeah. I mean, it, it is a it's a good time. Uh, it's especially fun, especially when I first made the page, when people were just sent, like showing me, I'd show up to work and they're like, dude, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> I to, like fake laugh at it. Like, <laughs> Oh man, that's I fire. love that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I people mean- try to figure out it's me or they think it's me. And I remember like one of my PJ friends called me and he's like, I fucking know it's you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, dude, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. Like that's my meme guy. He's like, I knew you were affiliated some way. So he actually believed the story that I had a <laughs> that, meme guy. That's my <laughs> meme guy. Like, <laughs> like, that's a service that you need in your life. Like, oh, no, man, that's my meme guy. Yeah, I know him. <laughs> she believed that I, like, called up some dude and, like, hey, here's some ideas for memes. Like, put them out there. <laughs> and then he calls me back, like, a week later, like, all right. Tell your meme guy. I'm like, dude, I have a meme guy. It's me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what the fuck? Tell your meme guy. It's like a dude with a with a fucking key, like a Saturn, like just hanging out with the trunk open. Hey man, you need memes? Hey dude. Meme hey dude, There's you need memes? memes under this yeah. coat. Hey, you check it out. Come on over in. I got memes for sale. A couple bucks. <laughs> so it's it so funny. Hey, tell your meme guy, dude. What? All you right. That. You are fucking hyper entertaining. I love all of our conversations. Where can people watch you on Twitch? Because you do stream a few times a week. Yeah, I stream fucking like every day at this point. Hell yeah. Um, So yeah, you can find me on Twitch, Twitch twitch.tv slash 18 disaster. That one's pretty simple. And then your Instagram we have right underneath this to it. I'm opposite. So I've got a, that I'm, I'm pointing in the camera right there. There we go disaster.iv on Instagram if you want to take part in the joyous memes that you put out, which I'm sure we're going to get to see a lot of good KD gate ones over the next week. So absolutely. Yeah. Everybody absolutely. jump in and, and you know, disaster. I can't wait to have you back again because after now that we're done with your, your kind of bio and background and all that stuff, the next one we do, we can just talk about your shit. Yeah. That's uh that's one I'm looking forward to. Cause this one kind of sucked. Hey, you know, the first ones are always like got to kind of kind of define the guest for everybody. But then the second ones, we get to go hard. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll drink on the next one. Oh, perfect. We'll do it in the evening. I won't be hungover. (laughs) I'll have, maybe I'll have a drink too for that one as a special occasion. Oh, yes, please. (laughs) Well, hey, thanks for joining us, Disaster. Everybody check him out. He's really fun. And thanks you guys for listening to Free Range American. Uh, Don't forget, we have freerangeamerican.us right now where you you can now get free range American gear. So go check it out. We'll see you guys later.